Good morning and welcome to this last video. Today I want to focus on meditation and some relaxation and I'll do a little bit of preparing the body for meditation because sitting can be a difficult uh, exercise um, to do. I just want to read this piece. It's a very short piece from Thomas Merton, a really nice wise teacher. Um, and the reason I'm reading this is that difficult and all as things are at the moment, I feel it could be a wake up call to each of us individually, nationally and globally. And that things will have to change if we're going to survive, as there may be other pandemics or difficulties that certainly will be difficulties with the economy and world economies. So we're all going to have to deal with change. And I think one of the things that we can look at is how we can work better together in the future and be less divisive and more caring about the world resources and all human beings. So you know what I mean. <clears throat> so this is something that we could be leaving behind. And I, I sort of feel in my own life at the moment, I don't feel under pressure to do lots of things and to be very busy. <clears throat> and I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying slowing down and doing choosing things to do and and so on. So that was why I was sort of drawn to this. The rush and pressure of modern life are a form, perhaps the most common form, of innate violence. To allow oneself to be carried away by a multitude of conflicting concerns, to surrender to too many demands, to commit oneself to too many projects, to want to help everyone in everything is to succumb to violence. The frenzy of the activist neutralizes his work for peace. It destroys her own inner capacity for peace. It kills the root of inner wisdom, which makes work fruitful. So just that last line again. It kills the root of inner wisdom, which makes work fruitful. So for me, yoga has been a great learning and has made me very aware of the mindset that I want to be in as much as possible, where I can think clearly and act well in a wise way. And meditation is training. It's, it's time to really connect with that inner wisdom and to let it free up to be to be in your life more or let it be in my life more so that's what it means to me and in order to move into that wise caring non-violent place i need to recognize the pull of the mind. So I started by, you know, saying in the first video, the mind is is uh, is like moving into a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go into it on your own. Or I sometimes use the analogy of the mind is like a wild dog. It takes you here, there, and everywhere. And meditation is like putting that wild dog on a lead and saying no. You know, I'm not constantly going where you want me to go. 
um, there's a, 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 a better way of doing this and there's a better way of using this wonderful instrument, the mind, and it takes discipline, it takes practice. So as many of you know, I really like a Buddhist approach to, to this uh, way of practicing. And Tanzen Wanyan Rinpoche has been a great teacher. And he talks about three doors. And I'm just going to remind you of those because I need re reminding constantly. Um, so easy to get caught up in the, in, the, in the ego. So he talks about three doors to release, to be released of that ego consciousness, that ego mind, body and speech. The first one, body, that we can abuse this body. You know, we can have pleasure eating too much, drinking too much, not exercising and so on. There's a certain amount of pleasure in that, but it, it adds up and uh, it doesn't sustain us. So we can abuse the body and that's exiting the door or we can enter the door to be conscious of the body, to be kind to the body, to be aware of what it needs and that's entering the door. The second one is speech. We can so easily destroy a relationship, a friendship, by some harsh words, but also to watch how we internalize speech and we give out and criticize and yeah really really talk to ourselves with with a harsh judgmental mind and that is exiting the door but to enter the door we observe the mindset we observe how we are speaking to ourselves maybe harshly and we make change we begin to soften and really to use kindness to heal a lot of the the way that we can abuse our, ourselves and then the third one is out of speech and out of body awareness we form opinions and we get very set in our minds as to the way things are and uh, and the way others are and we discriminate um, and that's another way that we exit the door so to enter the door we observe how our mind can close to ourselves and to others and we use this practice to open to open that heart to ourselves and in doing so, we share that open-heartedness with others. So I just find that a really helpful way of recognizing how I'm not always, um, or most of the time, and not as kind and as caring and as wise and compassionate as I, as I could be. Um, and when I'm not in that place of kindness, when I'm in a, a difficult place, Tanzen calls that sitting on a rotten karma cushion. Sitting on a rotten karma cushion. I love that. And I just recognize it in myself at times. Oh, there I go again. I'm sitting on my rotten karma cushion. And then just to know, I need to practice. I need to sit. I need to bring kindness into my mind, my body, my heart. I need to refresh, renew my energy. So that's that's just my understanding of it. Um, that
that I can share. And uh, let's just practice. So to practice, we need to be in a comfortable body um, and to see the hips and the shoulders as locks, you know, ways that we can really tighten up and lock up tightness in the spine. So let's just start with loosening up the hips and a nice easy way of doing that is to release within the hip socket by taking the foot into your hands and maybe just bringing that right arm in so that you can give your nose a kiss and you can open up the hip. And then remember that open hips are like doors. They open this way, but they also close this way. So bringing that leg over and then some of you will be able to bring that leg right over. So you're stacking one knee on top of the other, left hand onto the knee, right arm up, equal weight in each buttock and a nice big yawny stretch as you welcome yourself into the right side of your body. Oh, that's nice. And then just bringing that right arm over to the left without changing the weight in the buttocks. So you're still sitting down into the right side of your pelvis, but the rib cage and the muscles in the right side of your body are just opening up a little more. And you can let your head relax. Just go over as far as you're comfortable. Remember we're practicing kindness in the body, so don't overextend. Good. And then gently just coming back. And we'll change leg. Bringing the left foot in. Hugging it with your hands there, your foot, holding your foot nice and tight with your hands. And then opening up that left hip. So think of the hip as a door. You're opening the door. And then you're closing the door. And if you can, you bring the leg over. So you're stacking one hip, well, sorry, one knee on top of the other. Right hand onto your left knee. Left arm up. Check that there's equal weight in each buttock and begin a nice lengthy yawn. Ooh. You're letting go of the clock and you're moving into breath time. So that yawning really helps the out breath to lengthen and in turn that relaxes the nervous system. Easing over now towards the right without taking the weight out of the left side of your pelvis and begin to open up between the ribs, really reaching into that area. I can move much, much freer now. I didn't say anything, but some weeks ago, it's now about five weeks ago, I actually, um, actually injured a rib. I uh, cracked a rib. On a, on a ladder, slipping off a ladder. So that was my initial injury, but I just kept doing yoga to the extent I could, being gentle, being kind with that area. And now I can really notice I've got the movement back. And then just gently coming back. Good, stretching the legs down and just rolling out the tiredness or the tightness in those hips. Okay, bending the right knee and stepping the right foot over, drawing that knee well in, wrapping your left elbow around that knee, and then if you like, you could bring this one in towards the right, but you can leave it straight out. It doesn't make that much difference. Okay, so we're gonna use both arms now to bring the body around towards the right, to roll the right shoulder back, Oh, and I have much more freedom now in the upper body. It's so nice. And then release the head. Just let it turn in the opposite direction. And just breathe into that. What a lovely stretch for the back. 
easy breathing. And just gently coming out of that, stretching the legs down, just walking the knees. Bending your left leg so your foot is on the ground, sitting up nice and tall. Holding that knee and just getting a little bit of a stretch. Taking that foot over and just increasing that stretch a little more. You can feel it into the left buttock area. Good. Now you can stay like that if you like, or... You can bend this right foot and bring it in towards the left. Drawing that leg well in, wrapping my right elbow around the knee to draw it in, taking my left arm up, getting length into each side of the body before bringing the hand back behind. So now I'm using both arms to help me to turn towards the left and release the head. And just breathe into that. may find, you know, with each breath, you can soften the rib cage a little more. You can move a little deeper into the stretch. Good. And then slowly release and just stretching out the legs. And this will just suit some people. It mightn't suit everybody. Taking that right foot up again, bringing it across, hands on the ground left foot back so sitting into that stretch now if if you found that difficult you could be using blocks and you could sit up on your blocks and just make it that much easier okay and take the hands behind clasp them roll the shoulders right back now you could be doing this with your legs straight out in front if you found this too difficult okay lifting the chest and then coming forward nice and gently, bringing the arms up behind you, kiss your knee. And slowly coming back, release. So if you found that too difficult, you could do it this way, to take the hands behind and come forward like that. Okay. So we go to the other side, so you bend your left knee, Take your left foot over so you're stacking one knee on top of the other and take your right one back. Sit up nice and tall. Use blocks if you need. Hands coming behind. Clasp them nice and gently. Roll the shoulders right back. Lift the chest. Lift the head. Take a deep breath and as you breathe out, come forward and kiss your knee. And slowly coming out. So here's releasing this lock, releasing the shoulder lock, releasing the hip lock. So your back is freer to move forward and back. And let go. Okay. So now bending both knees and sitting whatever way you're comfortable. You could have, just to remind you, you could be putting a block underneath each knee like this. And you could use this behind your, I'll show you that one in a moment. So that's one way of sitting for meditation. Another way is to have your feet forward like this and a block underneath each knee like that. That's, that can be quite comfortable. If all this fails, remember you can always sit in a chair to meditate. All right, just the back. So if I cross my legs, and if my knees come to the ground, then I have a whole triangular shape to support my body weight. But here is a little bit caught. And after a certain amount of time, this will happen. And that's not very helpful for your back. So by using a block and just taking it to the very edge of the sit bones, supporting the sit bones there, the block is in the air and then I can sit into that. So that gives a little bit 
of release for the lower back and it'll keep me upright in sitting. So that's, it's so useful. I, I find I'm always looking for something, anything like that or an old uh, a jumper or something and I'll always stick something underneath the bum just to make sure that I'm going to sit well and can, can support myself for, for the time needed, which is a good meditation practice would be 20 minutes. That's a complete meditation practice. It takes that long to really settle into it. And what you're, you know, if, if you, know, you don't really relate to this practice in terms of three doors, I'll try and bring you further through it now in a moment. But if you can't relate to that, another interesting way to relate to uh, what we're letting go of in the practice of meditation is an energy called Shempa. So Shempa is an itch. So when you come to sit in meditation, maybe at a physical level, you'll notice I'm not quite comfortable there. I'm not comfortable. And you start fidgeting. Okay. And what happens is if you find an itch and you itch it, and you stop, the next thing you'll notice is you've got another itch. And you itch it, and you stop, there's another one, and another one, and another one. And that's more to do with your mind than your body. So we recognize that energy at all levels, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. We recognize that energy of Shempa and we don't let it drive you. You don't let it take over. You don't let it lead you into that constant wanting more, more, more Shempa. It's a good one to remember. So hopefully you've got blocks underneath your knees if you need them. You're supporting the base of your, your spine nice and comfortably. And then we'll just look a little bit at this spine. So the spine extends from your tailbone to between your ears. And a good way of thinking of it is the very crown of your head. If you take a tuft of hair, if you have hair there, just take a tuft of hair from the crown of the head or just put a finger there, the crown area. And when you breathe in, let your attention move down through your body and all the way down into the ground. So it's like your mind, the tension and tightness in your muscles and joints, the energy just comes down, 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 down. And you release the weight of the world off your shoulders and you imagine that weight dropping down through the arms into soft hands. And you release weight from your armpits, down each side of the body, into your hips, your legs, and once again, the ground below. So just breathing in, allowing the whole outer shell of your body to soften. Breathing in, relaxing your face your jaw, the space between your eyebrows, your forehead, your scalp, your throat, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing any tightness in the chest, the tummy, relaxing the tummy and letting the weight drop, drop down, letting go of any tightness in the legs. So make sure that the position is comfortable and that it will, you'll be able to hold it. All of that on your in-breath, each in-breath, just releasing a little bit more tension, tightness, holding. Now focus on your out-breath. And on your out breath, imagine a silver thread from the tailbone threaded through each vertebrae, coming up the back of the neck 
and out through the crown of the head. And you can always take your hand here and draw, feel as if you've been drawn upwards with each out breath. As you breathe out, there's an effort, a good effort in lengthening, in supporting your sitting position. Out breath, lengthening, supporting your sitting position. In breath, drawing you down into the support of the ground below. Out breath, lengthening, bringing you up to the beautiful skies we've been enjoying, the sunlight, the openness of the sky. In breath, bringing you down into the earth, connecting to the earth, rooting yourself. Out breath, the freedom of lengthening, reaching upwards. So there is effort in sitting. And that effort you feel and you connect to each and every breath. And then we just need to make sure that there is a freedom in the breathing. So breathe down into the tummy area. Let the tummy area expand and sigh. Now you could imagine that you're using water to clean a, a jug or a bowl or a saucepan or something and you're breathing in and you're bringing water right down into the base of that vessel and on your out breath, you're releasing, you're letting go. So you're, you're releasing the water from the vessel and it is cleaning it. Each time you fill, each time you empty, you're cleaning. And so the same inside ourselves, we're bringing a breath deep down inside to cleanse, to free ourselves of the clutter. the tension, the holding, the shempa, the wanting to move on into something more interesting. The cleansing is to be more in this moment, fully connected to this breath, this moment. So just complete another two breaths at your own pace. Now gradually begin to let the breath settle. And you're letting the breath settle into its own rhythm. And it doesn't matter if the breath feels shallow or deep. It doesn't matter if the texture feels very jagged or smooth. Just give it your all. Stay with each breath and let it settle. And look for a moment of stillness at the end of the in-breath. And again at the end of the out-breath. And let it be a moment where nothing needs to happen. Let go of that champa, that, that energy of wanting, of itching for more, bigger, better, a 
of moving on. And just find peace and stillness and breathe stillness. And this is a stillness that supports the movement of life as it does when you're asleep. The breath is breathing you. It's a priceless gift. This moment is a priceless gift. Live it fully. Be still. I'm listening to the bird song. And sound just breaking that silence, that stillness. Breathe it. Feel yourself slowing down. Settle. Nothing to do, nothing to prove your worth, just savouring this moment, this breath. And be curious about the feel of stillness, your embodying stillness. Let the stillness soften any tension, any emotional upset, any soreness. So that's the first door, stillness in the body, entering into that deep stillness in the body. And that might be enough, but now we're going to explore the second door, which is speech. So in the stillness, notice thoughts as they arise and any emotional attachment to those thoughts. And then just let the thoughts melt into silence. You might like the image of a snowflake melting into the ocean, knowing that the ocean doesn't have to do anything to make the snowflake melt. It just melts. Breathe silence, an ocean of silence. As if you're diving deep down into the ocean and you're letting go of all the sounds of life around you. And you can just hear your breath. The sound of silence. It's 
stay with your breath. Breathe silence right down through the whole body, softening on your in-breath, lengthening the spine on the out-breath, keeping the body alive, keeping the spine awake, lengthening, lengthening on the out-breath. And you could leave it at that, or we can move into the third door. So the third door is the heart. That there may be feelings of anger, frustration, or you might, your mind might keep bringing you back to some conflict or busyness. And just be open now to spaciousness. And think about the sky, blue sky. We've had such wonderful weather lately and really enjoying that bright blue sky. Breathe the energy of the sky into your heart. So rather than looking at the sky, be the sky. Be that bright, open energy, an open heart. With each breath, feel as if your heart is opening a little more. Remember to take care of your spine while you're sitting by lengthening on the out breath, by softening on your in breath. So your energy is moving down. You feel grounded, safe, settled on your in breath. And on your out breath, there's an aliveness as the energy moves up the length of the spine out through the crown of the head, drawing you up to the bright blue sky or the heavens above, whatever works for you. Now begin to visualize as yourself as a small child and let that evoke the feeling of vulnerability that each and every one of us lives with. We can hide it behind ego consciousness and behavior or we can really honor and feel that vulnerability so that we can take care of it. So visualize yourself as a very small child and you're resting into the arms of a loving mother or father or caretaker. You are that child. It represents your vulnerability and the caretaker, be it the mother, the father. The caretaker is your, the space of stillness, silence and spaciousness within your own heart. It's the energy of compassion. So see that small child safe. The 
Chai doesn't have to do anything other than trust and be open to receive. Breathe, stillness, silence and spaciousness until you can feel you are in touch with the energy of compassion, open-heartedness, non-judgmental mind, kindness, and allow yourself to receive from your own good heart. And know that by receiving, you're not taking from anybody else. It's like the sun is shining there for everyone. But by receiving, you will be able to share that with others. Breathe and allow yourself to receive. Now just take your right hand and place it on your heart. Touch is very powerful and we're all missing that touch at the moment. You can't hug and uh, embrace your friends and your, your grandchildren and so on at the moment. So just with that hand resting on your own heart, breathe and let your heart open and wish yourself well. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be happy. And may I be free from suffering. Free of that egoic consciousness which can be so destructive. May I be free from suffering. Just take your left hand and place it on top of the right and focus your attention on others. Those who are sick at the moment, those who are alone and dying, those who are not able to reach out to their loved ones, those who are worried about what's going to happen afterwards, losing jobs, losing an income and so on. And just take a few moments to really settle into opening your heart to others. And there may be somebody in mind right now for you who is having a difficult time that you'd like to give your attention to, your compassion May you be well. May you be safe.
may you be happy. May you be free from suffering. Breathe and let your heart open a little more so that we can extend that compassion to all human beings, all sentient beings. And we can bring the animal world and the insect world and the world of nature into it as well. Valuable resources of the world And let's just open the hands out and let your hands rest on your legs, on your thighs. Big breath in and we breathe out, may all be well. And begin to feel a connection with all sentient beings. May all be safe. May all be happy. May all be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Now just take your right hand again and place it on your heart. And sometimes when we give,